directly from Rio, Brazil. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome, Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. This week we have some beautiful retro tech and uncover some cycling short gems. And as well as our usuals like comment and caption of the week, we also pay tribute to Paris, the heart of cycling. In light of the tragic events that unfolded in Paris at the weekend, we wanted to spend a little time just to reflect on the French capital, both in terms of its significance to the cycling world and also the special place that it holds in the hearts of cycling fans. Yeah, Paris has always played host to the final stage of the Tour de France. Since 1975, that place has been the Champs Elysees, now the most iconic cycling location in the world and a mecca for cycling fans around the globe. Yeah, in 1989, if you cast your mind back, it was the scene to arguably the most thrilling Tour de France finish ever when Greg Le Mans snatched victory from Laurent Fignon. You know, Le Mans accelerating away from the top corner with the Arc de Triomphe in the background and Bernardino back in 1981 sprinting to victory on the Champs-Élysées whilst clad in the yellow jersey, to me, remains some of the most enduring images in cycling. Yeah, as you said, Matt, Paris holds a very special place in cycling's heart. I will never, ever forget racing up and down that Champs-Élysées at the 2010 Tour de France. And I'm definitely going to go back soon to soak up the atmosphere on a day which basically gives goosebumps to riders and spectators alike. Yeah, I was privileged enough to live in the city for three years when I was racing as an amateur, and I've got some very, very fond memories of the city and of the people there. Our thoughts are with everyone that's been touched by that tragedy. Wout van Aert extended his lead in the Super Prestige series at the weekend, which took place in Gavera in Belgium. It was a fine solo victory on the hilly and dramatic course, though slightly less spectacular than perhaps it could have been, given that the conditions were pretty dry. Sven Nees came second after narrowly outsprinting Kevin Powles. And in the women's event, it was victory again for the fourth time in a row in the Super Prestige this year for Sana Khan. Ooh, she she uh, romped to a victory ahead of the Telnet Fidea duo of Julian Verschuren and Nikki Harris. Well, talking to Nikki Harris, you know she's moving across next season to Bowles Dolman yeah, from the Telenet yeah. Fidea squad. Uh, a great move, good to see her on the road, but I think more interestingly, arguably, is the fact she's broadening specialised, and specialised haven't got any uh, top top class female or male cyclocross riders on the scene, so good move for Spesh as well as Nikki herself. Mm. Did you also notice that Nikki Harris's helpers appear to be unofficially the best fed in the entire world of cyclocross? You're saying that fat? Check sure. out this. No, no, look at what she made. Oh, wow. I see. Is that on Instagram? God, that does look good, doesn't yeah. it? That's some sort of loaf. Surprise. Brazil and walnut. No, Food banana corn. and Brazil nut loaf. Nikki, if you're watching the show, we're often quite hungry. Yeah. <laughs> First class post, though. Please make it fresh. Is that, is that a ginger cake, that one? No, it's uh, a... Yeah, we mentioned a new website the other week called Bike-ID that aims to make life harder for thieves by creating a global bike database. So the theory is that if your bike is exported after it's been stolen, then you will be able to track it anywhere. Well, now another new website called Perfecto.bike aims to make it even harder to shift stolen goods. So Perfecto, in their own words, integrates with Strava, Bike Index, police databases, social networks, and more to offer the cycling world a smart, data-driven and clean alternative to Craigslist and eBay. Yeah, I think anything that helps reduce cycle theft is a good thing by us, and also that helps increase your chance of selling your bike online too. Well, hopefully get a big enough audience that you can still get decent money for it. Caption of the week. Now, last week's picture was a picture of Philippe Gilbert and photographer Tim Dewala. And the winner, from numerous entries in fact, is less than typical slam. <laughs> so that's, just, that's the first time I've read I that. Think it's Catchy. Sam. I think less, it's than Sam. less than typical slam. Thanks for that. Caption competition. Stand aside, Philippe. I'll show you why they call me The Flash. Very good, Sam. Nice. nice. Get in touch with us via Facebook and we shall send you out some GCN swag. This week's photo, you might have seen already, it was on our Facebook page last week. And it is Sai, just to the side of a quite a nice bike with an interesting pose. It's a beautiful shot, isn't mm. it? Apparently. I shall get you started. We didn't mm. do this last week, but I'm gonna get you started. Uh, Sai says, does my bum look big in this? The rest of us say, yes, humongous. 
I was speaking to somebody who works in the internet, and apparently it nearly broke the internet last week, that. What, my ass? Just my ass broke thing. the internet? Nearly. Anyway, if you want to enter our caption competition, you know where to stick it. In the comments section down below. I see what you did there. Time now for the increasingly popular hack forward slash bodge of the week. Whoa! What? Go on. Never mind me, we've got some absolute cracking bodge is of the week. First up is this one. Take a look at this from Peter Burgess Smith. Dave Wilkins rainy day bodge not recommended during an electrical storm. Well, wouldn't re recommend them. Yeah, my ear, got my that? Ear, it was quite a chilly weekend. It went out for a bit of a spin. My ears were absolutely toasty. I think this could be the future. Now, I tell you what, you've got to be careful what you wrap because you can get quite uncomfortable actually. Oh, God. That's what I mean. Right, moving swiftly on, the one that caught my own personal eye came in from Bernard Moss who said, Campagnolo EPS V2 battery install tool, B&Q Dell 95p, screw for free, that sounds slightly wrong, <laughs> gaffer tape, uh, jobs are good in. Sorry. Are we leaving that in? <laughs> Absolutely. This last one that we've called out though, I particularly like, from uh, Graham of the Wheels, uh, who's uh, got a video about this great way of mounting a magnet on your cranks to measure your cadence. And he's just basically stuck it to the back of his pedal axle, and away you go. How cool is that? Mm. Simple but effective. Yeah, because let's face it, straps on your cranks sometimes look a bit, well, bodged anyway, don't they? Yeah, true. So yeah, there we go. Nice one, Grant. Keep sending in your hacks and bodges. Yeah, hashtag GCN hack, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We fused together two jersey winners of some recent Tour de France's. The question is, who are they? <laughs> It's time now for our comment of the week. We've picked one each, and I picked this one from underneath our quiz show. And it comes in from That Wolf. Matt, I was thinking you would look as a really good presenter of some weird web show. Then I realised you are already a presenter of a weird web show. Right, right. thank you. Thank, don't really know what you're on about there, Dan, but thanks so much for that. But the second one up, this is from Patrick Least, uh, underneath the new show, I believe this one was. And it's uh, most epic climb lugging my bikes up three flights of narrow stairs without scratching the walls. Mm. I think, as I said earlier, we all feel your pain. Yeah. I think we've all lived in flats with bikes. Yeah, been there, done that. Now, my one from last week is from Splash Strike, who said, uh, under the winter mistakes video, say, don't bring your best bike and use mudguards. Turn up with Dura Ace, zip wheels, and no mudguards. Fair yeah, enough. Got a winter yeah, bike fair point. Like yeah, fair point. Thing is, you can use Dura Ace in the winter. You've got to clean it afterwards. There is it's amazing that. stuff, just clean it. Time now for cycling shorts. Now, first up, fancy buying an ex Team Sky camper van. Well, was it you that bid £35,500, nearly $50,000 the other day for the successful bid on eBay? Now, we did go on social media as GCN and say, well, suggest that we we're going to crowdfund a bid to have the van for ourselves, but unfortunately, Mr. Lloyd here said we couldn't do it because the specification within within uh, the team van wasn't as good as his days at yeah, surveillance testing. Too right. So a little bit. So, so basically, it's down to Dan. We didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. Moving on, Peter Sagan. Did you two see his pictures from his wedding the other day? I did. It took me a while to work out it was his wedding, but Absolutely yeah. Absolutely bonkers. Well, firstly, congrats, Peter. But I have to say that you took things to another level of flamboyancy in a wedding ceremony, which can only be described as theatrical. Hmm. Check out this photo and have a look for yourself. Crikey. What part of the ceremony is that from? Is no that, idea. Is that a vow? He's just... For richer, for poorer, perhaps? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, right, moving swiftly on. It's some really exciting racing news now. Alejandro Valverde in Movistar has said that he is going to race the Tour of Flanders next year, which is pretty cool. I do like it when a, uh, a rider takes themselves out of their comfort zone and is going to apply himself to something else. But I think he sounds quite a good shout at Flanders. I, th if, I think if he takes the start line, he'll be top five. Really? Because if he yeah, won yeah, it. I reckon so. That would be so. very cool. But like, this is a good precedent too. We did it last year with Roubaix. Imagine if Nibali does it with Roubaix as well, because he stands quite a good chance. It there, does make for exciting racing, doesn't it? Well, Brilliant. talking about Valverde, Movistar last week unveiled their new kit, which uh, hasn't dramatically changed. A little bit of white on the pockets and on the tipping. But for me, I look with interest at his national champion's jersey. Of course, he's the Spanish road champion. This year, he had the bands right the way across. He was clearly and very distinctly the national champion. This year, only a small nod to him being the champion. And being a bit of a traditionalist, 
I'm not overly keen. I mean, I like the kit, but it needs to be a bit more, I don't know. Well, actually, if you want an alternative, your own inert of pro cycling stats did make this. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, maybe Mozart got it right. I quite actually. like the new jersey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, Mozart definitely done a good job. Anyway, there. leave your comments down below yeah. about Valverde's jersey. Hey, did you guys sort out who was better, Cab or Cipollini, by the way? Oh, it's Cab, isn't it? No, it's Chippo. Well, because you guys definitely decided. Seventy percent of you on our Twitter and Facebook poll said that Cav is the best sprinter of all time. But interestingly, yeah, sort of. Velo News also did a poll off the back of our video yeah. and our post, and their results were slightly different. Only 56% of Velo News readers said that Cav was the best sprinter, so clearly a lot more uh, Chippo fans. Rather than a there. couple of lengths, it was like a half a wheel in it. Yeah. To use a sprinting well, a analogy. Is that a wheel? 6%. Guys, by the way, we have made it officially. Yeah? Well, uh, I mean, I have. Yeah. I mean, mm. check this out. Saved for all posterity on Google Street View. This is me midway through, midway through filming the uh, How to Pace Time Trials video. That is very cool. That is actually, I've, I'm quite jealous. First. You are the first of us to sort of end up on that, aren't you? Mm. There's not many people end up on Google Street View, really. Not, you know. Like, I'm surprised well, you that. weren't completely censored. I retire happy. Anyway, I'll tell you what was cool last week. I saw it on Twitter, or we all did. Uh, we've got to say thanks to Johnny Chandra. We do. Who tweeted these three rather cool. Um, I, wouldn't, I don't know whether they're flattering or not, but they are pretty cool images. Yours of us. is quite flattering. Yeah, I, anyway, thanks very much for those. They are quite funny. Yeah. They, he's definitely got you. No, I'm well, not sure about my t shirt. I don't no, know. My eyes, I look like my eyes about to pop out of my head and I'm gurning at the same time. <laughs> I was disappointed with mine. I've got like a narrow face and slightly patchy beard. I think Simon's neck is astonishing. Well, like quite giraffe. accurate actually as well. Amazing. Like a swan. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, we asked you to send in pictures of your retro ride after we featured Simon Burney's Allen, which he built out, the cyclocross bike, and we've had loads through. So we're going to do a few this week, and we're going to start off with Neil Zeising, which was one that stood out to us. So this is a 1984 Pinarello Trebizo with Campagnolo Chorus. Now he says the stickers have long since peeled off, but it rides like a magic carpet. Well, why haven't we gone that by then? That is a, that's a perfect retro ride, one that you can still get out on and enjoy. Now this one is Bianchi, I really, really like. That's been sent in by Ruby underscore Rube, and uh, it's a Mercatone Uno team bike from 1998, complete with Coca-Cola water bottle from the Tour de France. Wow. And that's cool, and that still looks quite contemporary as well, doesn't it? it I just love the colour scheme. It yeah, that's gorgeous. proper good. I like that. Last but by no means least is this absolute beauty from 1987. It's the Peugeot belonging to Joey McLaughlin of the old ANC team, the first British team at the time to participate in the Tour de France. Delicious. So, uh, yeah, it's an absolute beauty. X ANC Halfords team bikes. And the cool thing about it is it's still got the same colour bar tape and even the Isostar bottles on board, which are the same ones back then. Absolutely gorgeous. Bike. And the race number. And the Very cool well. indeed. That does look like the kind of bike you want to get out and ride now, doesn't it? Again, looks really yeah, turbo cool. cell, the orange turbo cell. That is the one that Joey uses. Well. Yeah, Gorgeous. Very nice. Keep them coming. Yeah, absolutely. Please do keep sending your retro rides because, as you can see, we love them. Yeah, and it's retro. got a hashtag too GCN Retro Bikes. Fingers on buzzers. Let's get quizzical. Just another quick reminder, if you haven't already, please enter our quiz to win loads of cool GCN stuff, plus this amazing signed jersey. Yeah, you have got until Monday the 23rd of November to get your entries in, so depending on when you're watching this, just under a week. Do it. Do it's it now. Jersey, Rodriguez, Kittle. I think that was tough. We've only just got out the neutral zone. Zone. Hmm. Hmm. It's time for Dom's Tweet of the Week now, and we've got an excellent one from him actually, from Thomas Decker. Now, Thomas Decker has said, Good morning, Twitter. Nice start to the week. Just love. And he's referring to this message that it looks like he received. Hey, Thomas, I'm a big fan of yours, but I wanted to ask, are you gay, bisexual, or straight? Now, the reason I'm asking is that I'm a gay male, and I was just curious. You are so drop-dead gorgeous. If you're not gay, you should be. That's just really nice, that isn't it? That's very cool, isn't it? It's basically a compliment right there. The yeah, I was hoping that picture of me on Facebook might, but... You never know. It's early days, early days. Anyway, well, talking about Domestique, if you haven't seen it already, click on this and have a little look. It's his first ever animation. It's very cool. If you've not seen it, check it out.
on the channel. This week on Wednesday, we've got a double feature. Firstly, it's how to train in mud with Lasty and Sai. When you're riding through mud, you want to keep your cadence somewhere between 65 and 80 RPM. If you spin too quickly, you're more likely to lose traction. But if you're over geared and you need to change gear at the last minute. Secondly, how to train indoors. One of the most efficient ways to train for cycling is to do it indoors. Whether you're pushed for time, whether you're after a really specific quality workout, or you simply can't get outside because the weather's too bad, you will find that by riding inside, you can get much fitter. Not to mention actually enjoying it as well. Then on Thursday, it's the top 10 things you didn't know or should know about cycling. And he won the race on a wooden bike with solid iron tires, not tires, but wheels. Yeah. And he did it over a 1,200 metre course on a gravel road, which went to the park fountain and back. Mm. On Friday, Matt and Sai take a look at the difference between, differences between retro and modern wheels. 11-speed DI2 will accept a 7-speed block. That is incredibly a dual race block. I think it might run on about one or two cogs, as I like to use. And Saturday's pro bike is Tom Muirson's Ridley Cyclocross. Sunday is off the back, and then on Monday, Dan shows you how to fit a traditional wired cycling computer, or odometer, as he likes to tell me. And then we're back here again, aren't we? Mm. Oh, here we are. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Again. Just Tuesday so quick. Just comes Hashtag round. welcome GCN. It's almost cyclical. Those retro wheels, were they? You wouldn't believe they actually work in Matt Scott Addict. A seven speed with DI2. I mean, check out our Instagram, at Global Cycling Network. There's a photograph of DI2 sneak peek. on the set and sneak peek. Uh, I couldn't believe it. That was awesome. They really popped in that bike, didn't they, Matt? They certainly did. Right, we will have to leave you, unfortunately, but we will leave you with Extreme Corner. Oh, yes. This week, we've got a clip of the amazing Kaleidoscope BMX vid. This will blow your mind. It actually did blow. My mind's already blown. Yeah, it went a long time ago, didn't it, Matt? Luckily, you had those uh, foil <laughs> there, Should have worn those when watching it. Anyway, check this out. Think of the DIY that went into that. Are you sure? I'm not sure that's real. Mind-boggling. Mm. Anyway, we're heading into the depths of winter. The weather's getting a bit gnarly, a bit damp, but how about clicking up here for our top 10 tips on how to ride in the rain. We got wet for you, basically. Yeah, and something else which you may have missed last week was Matt and I discussing who is the best sprinter of mm. all time. Is it Mario Cipollini or is it Mark Cavendish? Bearing in mind, the cab is still racing, but I say that you both see. And while you decide between yourselves who is the best, the rest of us can just subscribe to GCN by clicking on that little argument as it rages on.